This is Slidey 8 Fry here. So I was actually caught by surprise by this. I could have sworn I had the Cinemassacre YouTube channel added to my notifications, so I should have known about this when it was uploaded six days before this recording date of uh, July 6th. So it's a new episode of AVGN, Angry Video Game Nerd, and he's doing a continuation from his classic 2008 episode of when he reviewed Indiana Jones video games. Um, for the uh, Atari 2600 NES and, and, and the NES. That was because the very next day after that upload date, the Indiana Jones trilogy would no longer be a trilogy because, well, there you see it on the right, Indiana Jones and the King and Kingdom of the Crystal Skull came out the next day. So this must have been uploaded one day before the Dial of Destiny. Is that the name of the brand new one that just came out? The tart is great. <laughs> Today is the big day. The new Indiana Jones movie is out. That's right. Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. It's <laughs> going to be good. I have faith. It was only yesterday I was showing you all the games based on the classic trilogy. But now that it's a quadrilogy, I have a little surprise for you. Of course, there's always going to be games I missed. I already showed you a few based on Last Crusade. But there's like a thousand more. There's one on <laughs> Commodore 64, which is basically like a shittier version of the Genesis game, which is pretty shitty itself. Oh. I remember that's the one where Indy pours from the grail onto his father, like in the movie. Except, what is he pouring? That looks, um, questionable. Yes, Indy, right on my chest. <laughs> then there's the PC version, which is actually good. It's a poor- That wasn't a very good- Sean Connery impersonation, come on. Point and click game, made with a lot of care and attention to detail. The graphics and the lighting are really well done, but hang on, what's Indy doing with the water fountain? If he's drinking, he would be leaning over. So I can only conclude that since this game was developed and published by Lucasfilm Games, later LucasArts, it must be considered canon that Indy is a sink pisser. Either that, or maybe he's washing his hands in it? I don't know. I've done a sh Sean Connery accent by accident, but when I do it on purpose, it sounds like shit. But anyway, about that surprise, I'm going to do something a little different here. Usually, I take you back to the past, but this time, I'm going to play a new game. Yeah! They sent me an advanced copy of the new Crystal Skull game. I figured... Before I go see the movie, I might as well check out Leap the game. Frog. I see it has that guy from Transformers. Yep. I don't know how that's going to go, but the big question, <laughs> what console is this? Um, I d Dig. What? Yeah, I've never the even heard of that console. Dig. It's a brand new handheld console I've heard of coming Leapfrog, this summer. Though. It's quite an opportunity to be among the first to review it. It's geared towards children and is meant to be educational. Let's see. First, let's get this bastard out of the box. <laughs> Ugh, you think there's enough packaging here? Son of a bitch. <laughs> you know what's <laughs> bullshit? <laughs> oh look, they give you little stickers for overlays. Which one do you prefer? Well, obviously this one. <laughs> oh, I hate doing this shit. Get on there. Do you even need Let's the overlays? Read it out. Oh wait, they give you this protective cover also. So you're not going to see the sticker anyway. Motherfuckers. Yeah, what the hell? Let's put the game in. You know... I have high hopes here. I bet this will it's be pretty like decent. A Game Boy Advance. It can't be like those old games. I'm sure they learned their lessons by now. So Indy and Mutt are looking for the skull. Hang on. His name is Mutt? What I kind of name is that? that if named. they named the dog Indiana, where did Mutt come from? <laughs> I have a bad feeling about this, Indy. Yeah, I do too. The game starts up and it's a self-explanatory side-scroller. You're jumping around and whipping snakes. But you also have the option of punching. Not sure why. Yeah, Did Indy just punch a scorpion? <laughs> yes. And a big one. The scorpion's bigger than him. Imagine <laughs> if you saw a scorpion that big and had the nerve to walk up to it and punch it. <laughs> Who does? It's like in the um, Nightmare on Elm Street review when, I mean, that's an old one. He was angry Nintendo nerd in that episode, but um, <laughs> the guy, you could punch giant snakes at giant spiders. Like, who the hell would punch those things? You know what, I hope he actually does a joke similar to what he did in that episode, because that was really funny when he was punching a fake spider and a fake snake as a joke after that. 
assholes, goddamn fucking spiders. <laughs> Eat my ass, you fucking bitches. Show me you're a man. Punch those spiders. Spiders! Punch them! Snakes! You want some too? What does that? Next, he's punching nope. giant rats. Yikes. It's as big as that thing George Clooney fights in From Dusk Till Dawn. I wow. mentioned this was an educational system. Well, every now and then, you open a chest and have to answer a math problem. Okay, but the real so problem two. is this game is a piece of shit! <laughs> Sometimes you come to a series of platforms. You have to okay, jump on eight. the one with the correct answer, or else yeah. you fall through. Could you imagine that? Speaking from personal experience, I'm supposed uh, to be good great. at math because I'm a nerd, but really I'm not. If this were real, if my life depended on knowing the math, I'd be screwed. Imagine that. I walk up to the platform and then someone asks, Quick, Four. what's 32 divided by 8? I'd be like, fuck! As for those treasure chests, the strange thing is, it's optional. You don't really need to do it unless you okay. want the points. Some kid could be playing this and they're supposed to be learning math, but instead they skip the chests and just play the action parts. Mm. Let me ask you a question. If you were playing not a game and you had to choose between solving math problems or not solving math problems, which would you choose? Yeah. Some stages you play as Indy, others you play as Mutt. He's in the jungle, fighting with a sword on top of trucks and jeeps. Next, he's climbing on vines. Well, that makes sense. The funny sense. thing is, I bet none of this even happens in the movie. It does. What next? Is there going to be a bunch of monkeys? Not yes. happening. Yes. When you beat the stage <laughs> boss, Spalco, the game actually allows you to continuously whack her with the sword. Jeez, how cruel. Spalco, more like Spanko. The game is appropriately easy for kids. But damn, sometimes the clunky control can be frustrating and lead to many deaths. Just a reminder, this is not an NES controller. Right. It's so unfair! Ah, fuck! Shit! You should've just avoided that. Ah, uh, oh, you motherfucker! final boss is a huh? statue come to life. That'll be in the movie. Ah! Oh, now, this guy is tough. Man! You motherfucker. You motherfucker! <laughs> oh, man! <laughs> well, after finally beating him, Indy grabs the skull. It looks like he places it on a skeleton body. Don't look at it, Mutt. It unleashes its power, much like the Ark and they escape. I don't know about this game. I guess I have high expectations for anything new, but I am excited for that new movie. I mean, this is more than a movie. It's an event. Crystal Skull is gonna be the last Indiana Jones movie. <laughs> There's no way they're gonna make any more. Yeah, it's not like so they can de-age Harrison Ford or anything like that. That'd be like <laughs> if in 15 years, I come back to this same episode. How crazy would that be? <laughs> anyway, yep. fuck this didge game. Did you know it's a piece of shit? Ah, missed. Here, let me try again. Uh, no. Well, the thing's so small, did you really expect me to hit it? No. <laughs> uh, that's a crystal skull booze. <laughs> oh, it's going right. So, before I head off to see the movie, I want to take a brief look through some of the other games to see ahead of time where the movie might take inspiration. Why don't I just uh, talk a little bit about that game real quick. So, it doesn't look like it's really that bad of a game, but... The f when he mentioned the bad controls, yeah. No matter what game you play, if the controls are bad, it's it's not. It's it really messes up with your momentum. Messes up with how the game works. Messes up with everything. It's not not even fair. I love this episode. It reminds me of it was the last ninja that he reviewed on the NES. It was just like with this, where what we're actually watching, at least from in his universe, is an old episode that wasn't released at the time and is being released now. And we see that on the, the screen, but then it actually turns out that present day nerd is watching that video and then goes on to actually review the game in the present. That was really fun. 
so far. So far, so good. I'm looking forward to the rest of this review and the other games he is going to talk about in this episode that I somehow missed when it came out. Hey, what's up? We're back. Let's continue from where we were. So, I do gotta, I'd like to point out before continuing though, I love how he put these uh, jokes in there where he's like, oh yeah, it's not like that happened in the movie, but it did happen in the movie. And so, oh, it's not like there's gonna be a fifth movie, but there turned out to be a fifth movie. Um, <laughs> but, anyways, let's continue from where we left off. So, before I head off to see the movie, I want to take a brief look through some of the other games to see ahead of time where the movie might take inspiration. For example, on the PC, there was a game called Indiana Jones and the Desktop Adventures. Wow, real exciting name, right? That would be like yeah. calling one of the movies Indiana Jones and the Movie Escapade. It's a precursor <laughs> to Star Wars Yoda stories. It's an overhead action-based game with a puzzle-solving element. The exploration aspect is great, it has some appeal, but the movement and controls are pretty awkward. Great adventuring, bad combat. But the reason I bring it up is because, keep in mind, this game came out in 96, but the Crystal Skull is in it! Whoa, that's crazy. I did not expect that. I did see the... Um, all the movies except, except for the one that just came out. I don't remember them ever mentioning a Crystal Skull in the first three at all, so this is pretty fascinating they'd show this here. Um, for some reason, I'm thinking about Chip's challenge based on his movement and stuff, but no, it's not, it's not even that similar. There's a lot of games that uh, do that. Of course, the Crystal Skulls are real-life artifacts with a lot of mystery surrounding them, but the fact they were already included in the Indiana Jones universe means that the new movie may borrow things from the games. It was long speculated <laughs> that Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis from 92 might be the subject of the next movie. While that turned out not to be true, the game did a good job adding new lore to the franchise. Oh, it's shit. another point-and-click game, and <laughs> for its time, it was very cutting-edge. Okay. A lot of thought went into the plot, and the artwork is great. The graphics and sound are excellent, it plays out very well, and gives you enough clues to figure out what to click on. Above all, it feels very cinematic, as if this could have been the fourth movie. Yeah. It feels kind of sad to end all the fun speculation. Indiana Jones was, of course, inspired by many old film serials and movies that Steven Spielberg and George Lucas saw when they were young. They were also inspired by comics, most notably all the classic Scrooge McDuck adventures by <laughs> Carl Barks. Okay. So getting back to the games, it's worth looking to see what other Indiana Jones... Wait a minute. That's not an Indiana Jones game. What the hell? To see what else the fourth <laughs> movie could draw from, we could check out the 3D games. Indiana Jones and the Emperor's Tomb was fairly recent. It was on PS2, Xbox, PC, all that shit. Here, Indy has to find a pearl called the Heart of the Dragon buried with the first Emperor of China. Okay. Once again, it doesn't seem like the new film is based on it, but there's a great wealth of imagination and adventure within that could make for great cinematics. This game mm. is another good one, except for some annoying camera angles. You get to use the whip in all the ways you'd hope for, the voice acting is good, the likeness of Harrison Ford is done pretty well, and overall, there's okay, not much to complain about. But there was a game that came out before this one, Indiana Jones and the Infernal Man, a lot Machine. Of them. Infernal? The what? dictionary defines Infernal as irritating and tiresome. Sounds like something the Shredder would say, like, BLAST THIS INFERNAL MACHINE! <laughs> well, this was the first 3D Indiana Jones game. Came out in 99 on PC and 2000 on Nintendo 64. From what I heard, it was only available at Blockbuster Video. Hmm. This one's set after the original trilogy. The Soviets are trying to dig up a legendary Babylonian engine that was used to contact an ancient god or whatever. Indy meets up with a member of the CIA who sends him on the mission. You a famous archaeologist. I'm just a spy. Yeah, a spy can't do dangerous shit. Leave it to the archaeologist. <laughs> yes, Makes do sense. That. The gameplay oh is very much like Zelda Ocarina of Time. Pushing that's, that's, blocks, that's good. the Z-targeting, and the oh, on-screen nice. item selection and button commands are almost identical. 
One of the That's weapons good. you could switch to is a pair of boxing gloves. But come Why on, would you want really? that? Indy's carrying around boxing gloves? And when you switch to it, he punches. Did somebody just subscribe? Because if that's the case, that would mean that my channel should have, it should be at 7,000 subscribers now, so that's awesome. Which is barehanded anyway. I don't get it. Gloves. Come on, really? Indy's carrying around boxing gloves? And when you switch <laughs> to it, he punches barehanded anyway. I don't get it. Did you see that? I just killed a snake by punching the air above it. <laughs> you better watch these snakes. If you get bit, the venom starts draining your health. Oh, you gotta use sucks. the antidote, but if you're not paying attention, you might not even realize it. Having no understanding, the hey, rabble has thrown down his work. Um, Indy, four snap out of it. Oh boy, Indy's talking to the wall again. The that venom is making him feel funny. <laughs> so you just go around. He's just thinking out loud, come on. But, um... My question is, how would you be paying so little attention that you didn't notice that you were bit by a snake in this game? I mean, what? Or you, you're not paying attention to how much health is being drained or something? I don't know, it doesn't make much sense. Brown solving puzzles. It is somewhat in line. It's making him feel... Trust Snap out of it! Oh boy, Indy's talking to the wall again. That venom is making him feel funny. <laughs> so you just go around solving puzzles. It is somewhat yeah, in line with the movies. Just like He'll do things Ocarina like climb on top yeah. of a truck, and somehow the enemies don't notice him. I mean, come on, there's a guy laying on top of the truck. You can't see that? <laughs> then you're doing these <laughs> shitty leap of faith jumps. Of course, it oh, is an Indiana Jones game. That and one time, I actually landed on a button, which unlocked the next part. I didn't even know that was the goal. I'm just making this up as I go. Next, it's an icy winter level. Okay, so what do I do here? Piss Jehovah into the snow? I must say, I love when he swims, he takes his hat off. Because that would be unrealistic to swim with his hat on. When he comes back out of the water, the hat reappears. So I can only conclude I, that I every time he yeah, goes in the water, yeah. he loses the hat and puts a new one on. <laughs> oh, yeah, fuck. confirmed. Indy has an unlimited supply of hats in his of, pants. Of course he does. Whoa. Oh no. What the hell's going on? <laughs> oh my god. Okay, what this... in the name of ass? This There's game a lot is so of glitches fucked in this it belongs game. in a museum. <laughs> the jumps in this game are insane. It seems 90% of the time all you're doing is jumping around, hoping to make it. Get over there! Ah, nope. You motherfucker! Here, let me try again. Oh! That is not Leap a of faith? Jump. More like leap of fuck you! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Uh, get a gun. Yeah, there you go. Just like in the movie. McClunky. <laughs> Star Wars. Uh, can't take this. That's awesome. Another re reference to a Harrison Ford character. This time Han Solo with that one. I mean, at first it was a reference to that iconic scene in um, Indiana Jones where he shoots the swordsman with a gun and then ends the scene and doesn't want to have the epic sword fight. And then it turns into... <laughs> The uh, bar duel between Han Solo and, um... Hey, what's up? We're back. Let's continue from where we were. So, I do gotta... I'd like to point out before continuing, though, I love how he put these uh, jokes in there where he's like, oh yeah, it's not like that happened in the movie, but it did happen in the movie. And so, oh, it's not like there's gonna be a fifth movie, but there turned out to be a fifth movie. Um, <laughs> but... Anyways, let's continue from where we left off. Seems to be several other games, which will be based off the first three movies and not the fourth one. Let's continue. So, before I head off to see the movie, I want to take a brief look through some of the other games to see ahead of time where the movie might take inspiration. For example, on the PC, there was a game called Indiana Jones and the Desktop Adventures. Wow, real exciting name, right? 
That would be like yeah. calling one of the movies Indiana Jones and the Movie Escapade. It's a precursor <laughs> to Star Wars Yoda stories. It's an overhead action-based game with a puzzle-solving element. The exploration aspect is great, it has some appeal, but the movement and controls are pretty awkward. Great adventuring, bad combat. But the reason I bring it up is because, keep in mind, this game came out in 96, but the Crystal Skull is in it! Whoa, that's crazy. I did not expect that. I did see the... Um, all the movies except, except for the one that just came out. I don't remember them ever mentioning a Crystal Skull in the first three at all, so this is pretty fascinating they'd show this here. Um, for some reason, I'm thinking about Chip's challenge based on his movement and stuff, but no, it's not. it's not even that similar. There's a lot of games that uh, do that. Of course, the Crystal Skulls are real-life artifacts with a lot of mystery surrounding them, but the fact they were already included in the Indiana Jones universe means that the new movie may borrow things from the games. It was long speculated <laughs> that Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis from 92 might be the subject of the next movie. While that turned out not to be true, the game did a good job adding new lore to the franchise. Oh, it's shit. another point-and-click game, and <laughs> for its time, it was very cutting-edge. Okay. A lot of thought went into the plot, and the artwork is great. The graphics and sound island, are excellent, it plays out very well, and gives you enough clues to figure out what to click on. Above all, it feels very cinematic, as if this could have been the fourth movie. It yeah. feels kind of sad to end all the fun speculation. Indiana Jones was, of course, inspired by many old film serials and movies that Steven Spielberg and George Lucas saw when they were young. They were also inspired by comics, most notably all the classic Scrooge McDuck adventures by <laughs> Carl Barks. Okay. So getting back to the games, it's worth looking to see what other Indiana Jones... Wait a minute. That's not an Indiana Jones game. What the hell? To see what else the fourth <laughs> movie could draw from, we could check out the 3D games. Indiana Jones and the Emperor's Tomb was fairly recent. It was on PS2, Xbox, PC, all that shit. Here, Indy has to find a pearl called the Heart of the Dragon buried with the first Emperor of China. Okay. Once again, it doesn't seem like the new film is based on it, but there's a great wealth of imagination and adventure within that could make for great cinematics. This game mm. is another good one, except for some annoying camera angles. You get to use the whip in all the ways you'd hope for, the voice acting is good, the likeness of Harrison Ford is done pretty well, and overall, there's okay, not much to complain about. But there was a game that came out before this one, Indiana Jones and the Infernal Man, a lot Machine. Of them. Infernal? The what? dictionary defines Infernal as irritating and tiresome. Sounds like something the Shredder would say, like, BLAST THIS INFERNAL MACHINE! <laughs> well, this was the first 3D Indiana Jones game. Came out in 99 on PC and 2000 on Nintendo 64. From what I heard, it was only available at Blockbuster Video. Hmm. This one's set after the original trilogy. The Soviets are trying to dig up a legendary Babylonian engine that was used to contact an ancient god or whatever. Indy meets up with a member of the CIA who sends him on the mission. You a famous archaeologist. I'm just a spy. Yeah, a spy can't do dangerous shit. Leave it to the archaeologist. <laughs> yes, Makes do sense. That. The gameplay oh is very much like Zelda Ocarina of Time. Pushing that's, that's, blocks, that's good. the Z targeting, and the oh, on-screen nice. item selection and button commands are almost identical. One of the that's weapons good. you can switch to is a pair of boxing gloves. Come Why on, would you want really? that? Really? Indy's carrying around boxing gloves? And when you switch to it, he punches... Did somebody just subscribe? Because if that's the case, that would mean that my channel should have, it should be at 7,000 subscribers now, so that's awesome. Which is barehanded anyway. I don't get it. Gloves. Come on, really? Indy's carrying around boxing gloves? And when you switch <laughs> to it, he punches barehanded anyway. I don't get it. Did you see that? I just killed a snake by punching the air above it. <laughs> you better watch these snakes. If you get bit, the venom starts draining your health. Oh, you gotta use sucks. the antidote, but if you're not paying attention, you might not even realize it. 
having no understanding, the hey, rabble Indy, had thrown down his work. Um, Indy, four snap out of it. Oh boy, Indy's talking to the wall again. That venom is making him feel funny. <laughs> so you just go around. He's just thinking out loud. Come on. But um, my question is, how would you be paying so little attention that you didn't notice that you were bit by a snake in this game? I mean, what? Or you, you're not paying attention to how much health is being drained or something? I don't know. It doesn't make much sense. Brown solving puzzles. It is somewhat in line. It's making him feel... Snap out of it. Oh, boy. Indy's talking to the wall again. That venom is making him feel funny. <laughs> so you just go around solving puzzles. It is somewhat yeah, in line with the movies. Just like He'll do things Ocarina like climb on top yeah. of a truck, and somehow the enemies don't notice him. I mean, come on. There's a guy laying on top of the truck. You can't see that? <laughs> then you're doing these <laughs> shitty leap of faith jumps. Of course, it oh, is an Indiana Jones game. And one time, I actually landed on a button, which unlocked the next part. I didn't even know that was the goal. I'm just making this up as I go. Next, it's an icy winter level. Okay, so what do I do here? Piss Jehovah into the snow? I must say, I love when he swims, he takes his hat off. Because that would be unrealistic, to swim with his hat on. When he comes back out of the water, the hat reappears. So I can only conclude I, that I every time the, he goes yeah, in the water, yeah. he loses the hat and puts a new one on. Oh, yeah, fuck. confirmed. Indy has an unlimited supply of hats in his of, pants. Of course he does. Whoa. Oh no. What the hell's going on? <laughs> oh my god. Okay, what this, in the name of ass? This game a lot is so of glitches fucked in this it belongs game. in a museum. <laughs> the jumps in this game are insane. It seems 90% of the time all you're doing is jumping around, hoping to make it. Get over there! Ugh, you nope. motherfucker! Here, let me try again. Oh! That is not Leap of faith? Jump. More like leap of fuck you! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Uh, get a gun. Yeah, there you go. Just like in the movie. My clanky. <laughs> Star Wars. Uh, Can't take this. That's awesome. Another re reference to a Harrison Ford character. This time Han Solo with that one. I mean, at first it was a reference to that iconic scene in um, Indiana Jones where he shoots the swordsman with a gun and then ends the scene and doesn't want to have the epic sword fight. And then it turns into... <laughs> The uh, bar duel between Han Solo and um, God, I don't remember that guy's name, G Greedo or something. I think that was his name. You know, trying to determine who shot first, and you know that scene. Um, <clears throat> fun fact: uh, the iconic scene where Indiana Jones is threatened with a sword fight and then just shoots the guy and doesn't have the sword fight and, you know, wins by just shooting the guy with a pistol. Behind the scenes, it was actually supposed to be a sword fight scene. But Harrison Ford actually wasn't feeling well. Like, he was really feeling under the weather. And he's like, can we just, can I just shoot him instead? And then, yeah, that's why in the movie he shoots him instead of doing the sword fight because Harrison Ford wasn't feeling well. And I guess the director's like, okay, it's a great idea. Now it's a really iconic scene because it's like, yeah, what's the point of a sword if he could just shoot you with a gun, right? So, <laughs> awesome scene. All because he was sick. <laughs> Many references. Anyway, I've got... I can't take this many references. <laughs> it's a lot of references anyway, to Harrison Ford I've gone characters. far enough down the rabbit hole with Indiana Jones games, so I'm done. And hey, guess what? You know what time it is? It's movie time. That's right. I'm off to see... Crystal Skull. I shouldn't drive after that, though. Well, I'll see you next time with some shorter reviews. You know, I need a little break here. So, just stay away from all that foul shit. Go check out the movie, I guess. And, I'll see you later.
Okay. Interesting. I'm going to check out um, what had happened with that notification that appeared on my ocean. The narrator has had enough. That sounds funny, but not now. Well, that's 10 seconds. I, I guess I'll let it play. <laughs> hey, wake up! This is no time to be dozing. The planet is in danger and you guys have to save it. So don't just stand there. Do something! <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> don't just stand there. Do something. <laughs> All right. Oh, cool. I'm over 7,000 now. Awesome. I'll have to make a post about that. Really cool. Alright, anyways. You know, I'll do uh, part three, actually, later on. But, um, that was a lot of fun. Uh, I really enjoyed seeing him review those games. That N64 one, yeah, it's basically just like... Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, and that's that's a good thing, you know. Too bad it had all those crazy glitches where <laughs> the game was unplayable when that happened, but um, you know, sometimes they're fun to find, especially on an AVGN review. A lot of fun to um, do uh, to, to see him point out these crazy glitches. Um... I don't know how many of you know this, but um, most of you probably do. But there's actually two versions of the original AVGN episode when he reviewed the Indiana Jones games back in 2008. And it wasn't until like a couple years ago I found out about the second version, which actually came out not that long after, where he reviews the other NES game of the third movie that he mentioned but didn't review. He actually... It, it, the video is basically literally the same all the way through, but before reviewing the one that we saw in the original video of the third game, he re reviews the other one that came out, which he does pretty briefly and then goes to the the one that was on the original video. Um, anyways, I'm looking forward to how James is gonna how the fucking nerd is gonna react to the new movie. He's gonna be like. Those things did happen in the movie. Those weird things that happened in the game, in the in the, in that leapfrog game, happened in the movie. What the hell? Or what the fuck? You know. Um, it was cool of them to actually go all out with this. Like, I was able to tell. Like, you could tell it was green screened when it when when he was in his old house back then. You know. Um, but it was cool that they actually did that. Um, you know making it very clear that this episode is supposed to take place back in 2008 when he just saw King of the Crystal Skull for the first time. Um, makes me wonder if he's going to jump into the new movie that just came out, Dial of Destiny. Anyways, thank you so much. We'll continue this later. The narrator has had enough. That sounds funny, but not now. Well, that's 10 seconds. I, I guess I'll let it play. Hey, wake up! This is no time to be dozing. The planet is in danger and you guys have to save it. So don't just stand there. Do something! <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> don't just stand there. Do something. <laughs> oh, cool. I'm over 7,000 now. Awesome. I'll have to make a post about that. That was a lot of fun. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Seeing him review those games. That N64 one, yeah, it's basically just like Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. And that's that's a good thing, you know. Too bad it had all those crazy glitches where <laughs> the game was unplayable when that happened. But, um, you know, sometimes they're fun to find. Especially on an AVGN review. A lot of fun to, um, do, uh, to, to see him point out these crazy glitches. Um... I don't know how many of you know this, but um, most of you probably do. 
but there's actually two versions of the original AVGN episode when he reviewed the Indiana Jones games back in 2008. And it wasn't until like a couple years ago I found out about the second version, which actually came out not that long after, where he reviews the other NES game of the third movie that he mentioned but didn't review. He actually... It, the video is basically literally the same all the way through, but before reviewing the one that we saw in the original video of the third game, he re reviews the other one that came out, which he does pretty briefly and then goes to the the one that was on the original video. Um, anyways, I'm looking forward to how James is going to... how the fucking nerd is going to react to the new movie. He's going to be like... Those things did happen in the movie. Those weird things that happened in the game, in the in the, in that leapfrog game, happened in the movie. What the hell? Or what the fuck? You know. Um, it was cool of them to actually go all out with this. Like, I was able to tell. Like, you could tell it was green screened when it when when he was in his old house back then. You know. Um, but it was cool that they actually did that. Um, you know making it very clear that this episode is supposed to take place back in 2008 when he just saw King of the Crystal Skull for the first time. Um, makes me wonder if he's going to jump into the new movie that just came out, Dial of Destiny. <laughs> and we're back. So we're doing a part... We're, we're going to do the final recording of this, and I'm going to make sure to actually finish this time. There's still a bit left in the video there's probably several games, several games that <laughs> yes you sure do babe <laughs> several several games that i'm sure james rolf angry video game nerd is going to still review and this is when he just came back from watching kingdom of the crystal skull in 2008 so let's uh take a look <laughs> all right Let's continue. Oh, God! Oh, my God! I can't believe it's not as good as Raiders and Crusade! <laughs> Who would have thought a movie made in the year 2008 would have any CG in it? Oh, ah, they if they make another Indiana Jones movie, I'm not watching it. <laughs> All right, I'm off to see the Dial of Destiny. Speaking of which, I happen to have found the real dial. Yeah. Love you, babe. It has the power to change the course of history. It's a little old. It's a little smelly, a little muddy. Uh. Wait a minute. That's not mud. Oh. Shit. It's shit, isn't it? This isn't the dial. This, this, this is the diarrhea dial. <laughs> oh, I need to cleanse my palate. I need to, to watch something else. I know. The Adventures of Young Indiana Jones. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Okay. <laughs> I have the new DVD set. I always meant to getting around to watching it. Let's open this bad boy. Wow, this is a lot of discs. And this Holy is only crap. volume one. Look at all these. Oh, and look at all these special features. Yeah, disc 12 has an interactive timeline, historical lecture, revolution, interactive game? No. Yeah, I remember that back in the like back in the 2000s, mostly the early to mid 2000s, and I guess to some extent in the late 2000s. Um, th this basically died in 20 in the 2010s, um, but um, a lot of DVDs back then used to have like a ton of extra features, like a ton of them. DVDs nowadays still generally have them, but some of them actually don't. Like, actually, my favorite movie of all time, The Dark Knight, which came out in 2008, um, from what I remember, last time I played the DVD, it's been a long while since I watched it, but um, it didn't have any extra features. It just had play, and then it had, like, you know, captions, and then scenes, which that's what most DVDs do nowadays. It's just play, captions, scenes. Those are the only options on the menu, but they... But uh, ones in the 2000s, for most of the 2000s decade, had uh, a lot of crazy extra features that included an interactive game where you point the remote or where you press the uh, 
buttons on the remote, you know, the arrow buttons on the remote to move around, and then you press enter to make the selection, and you either win or lose the game you're playing on the DVD. It's it was like extremely common back then. I remember seeing that with uh, Spy Kids 2, um, Monsters Inc., and uh, the, what else? Um, oh, um, Shanghai Noon. And uh, I'm, I'm sure Shanghai Nights had it, but I never looked into the special features. Um, and there were a lot of movies at the time that had that stuff. It, it was just a lot more interactive. It was, I think it's actually something that. Uh, James kind of complained about in that one video he did a few years ago where he was talking about what he disliked about Blu-rays, how there's not that many extra features in the menus. Let's see if this diarrhea dial works. I guess you just push this. <clears throat> okay. Oh. oh, is it possible that these games are getting even shittier? Looks like the nerds got more work to do. Shorter <laughs> reviews my ass. Oh, that looks gosh. nothing like Indiana Jones. He's not Harrison Ford or Perhaps. Sean Patrick Flannery. And it's an educational game? Who wants that? I don't it's know. It's a sad thing when you can say the best part of the whole game is playing blackjack. <laughs> but if this is an educational game for kids, why would they teach you gambling? I don't know. What were they thinking? Huh. I don't know. <laughs> Actually, this isn't bad. Considering it's just a DVD extra, they put a lot of effort into it. It's basically like an episode of the show made into an Oregon Trail type of game where you have to manage your supply of food and water. The dialogue is well written and the voice acting is good. Looks like uh, to do that he had to put the DVD into his computer. Which, yeah, some DVDs did that too. You could actually put them into your... Uh computer's DVD drive and play an interactive game that way, or even listen to the movie's soundtrack that way. I remember doing that with uh, Scorpion King. You were able to listen to, if I, if it's, if I remember correctly, I was able to listen to the soundtrack from the movie by putting the DVD in my computer, which was actually kind of a neat feature. Maybe you gotta push it harder. <laughs> oh, I died for no reason? Did I have a snake bite? Did I forget to drink water? I don't know. <laughs> and you know what's worse? There's three of these games from each DVD volume. Revolution, Special Delivery, and Hunting for Treasure. And they all suck. The drawings look like a discombobulated mess. And when you're not having a lame-ass, confusing conversation, you're busy whipping snakes and murdering people and animals. You <laughs> never have enough room in your inventory. Sometimes it's even full right from the start. I uh, never know what to sucks. do, so I find myself just playing blackjack all the time. <laughs> because of that, I guess I lost all my money for food and water. On top of the crippling Yikes. financial ruin, dehydration, and delirium, India apparently has broken arms, snake venom, malaria, and dies a broke loser. Since we're on a young Indiana wow. Jones theme now, let's check out the Genesis game, Instruments of Chaos. Okay. First, you get a message from Agent Rolf. Rolf? Nobody's name is Rolf. The mission uh, is to stop enemy. <laughs> That's a good one. Nobody's name is Rolf. Well, we all know who's vo who who plays angry video game nerd, James Rolf. <laughs> he spies from buying the latest weapon. His name is Rolf. The mission is to stop enemy spies from buying the latest weapon technologies from countries all over Europe. You can play the stages in any order you like. Okay. So I'll try out England. Sure. The action starts on London's Tower Bridge. It's okay. a basic side scroller. Seems pretty average. Ugh. Oh, this makes all the other games seem great! Uh, I keep getting zapped by lightning over and over. What the hell? Every step I take, a bird or something hits me and knocks me back. Get over there. And these construction workers are always in my way. <laughs> Who would be working on a bridge in the middle of a thunderstorm? I, I don't know. Oh, I can just shoot them? Indiana Jones murders construction workers? <laughs> what kind of hero is he? There's no clear indication of where to go. Can I go over here? Fuck! Oh, that's messed up. Oh, I get it. You're supposed to bomb the gearbox. How are you supposed to know that? I don't know. So Looks Indy like bombs a bridge and kills people. I bet you weren't aware of his dark past. Yeah. I wonder if that's canon. 
<laughs> anyway, I could no. not beat this stage. After about an hour, I gave up and tried to bet. Oh, give it to me, diarrhea dial, come on. Oh, goodness. Here, all you're doing is hopping across sheets of ice, and if you thought this game would have smooth platform jumping, you're wrong. Ooh, you try to calculate bad. your trajectory, but only end up falling in the water again and again. To make things worse, somebody left wooden crates laying around. <laughs> and just when you start getting some momentum, a fish leaps out and knocks you back. Oh, that Don't sucks. you hate it when that happens? When you're busy trying to jump across sheets of ice and a fucking fish hits you in the face? <laughs> then I tried the India stage. Oh, what the fuck happened there? Right, come on, whip. Oh, okay, never mind. Let's get the. Oh, God, come on. Die. What is Die. going on? Die. Okay, let's go. For the... All right, let's get rid of the snake first. He's out of. Oh, oh my God. I can't even. Oh. I don't throw a grenade at him or something. Die. The problem with this stage is there's too many enemies attacking all at once. It's there as if go. you took all the enemies in the entire stage and crammed them all into one spot. <laughs> like the enemies got smart and said, hey, let's gang up on them. There's hard games, yeah, yeah. excruciatingly difficult games, but this falls to a whole new level of no mercy torture games. Get used to that end screen that says, we regret to inform you, Indiana Jones is dead. As Yikes. if they want it to sink in. Your beloved character has died because you failed. That's it. The character is dead. Harrison Ford's never coming back to do another movie. And it's all your fault because you got hit by a combination of birds, snakes, flying knives, and a monkey hopped up on drugs. Right, just one last stage. This is it. Last try. You can't go to Germany until you've beaten the rest. And I can't beat a single one so far. But maybe in Egypt I'll have better luck. Let's see. Oh, diarrhea! Oh. What the fuck? What the oh. fuck? With the fucking snake! <laughs> fuck! <laughs> fuck! I don't think I could take anymore, mm -hmm. but our last hope is the Young Indiana Jones Chronicles on NES. Diarrhea, cha cha cha, diarrhea. Great, no whip, you gotta use your fists. Was oh, that a one hit kill? Oh, no, you do have a health bar, okay. Oh! This is the worst Indiana Jones game of all! This is below any human standard of decency! I can't even believe this is real! Why did they make level one so difficult? Right out of the gate, this game bullies you relentlessly. How were kids supposed to play this? There's games that just suck. But then there's games that seem to be made with ill intent. Like this was designed to punish your soul. As if someone hates you. Well, fuck them. They don't allow you to make any mistakes. You might be having a near flawless run, but oops, you get hit, you lose your weapon, and then you're down to your fists, which is useless. You come yeah. to a wall of gun turrets like the Contra level one boss. Good luck trying to punch Ooh. that. I've given every ounce of <laughs> my gaming cannons. spirit and I can't beat level one. Uh! Uh! Oh, Oh, it's killing me. No, no, it's actually killing me. Oh, come on. <laughs> ah, why did all these games suck? The power glove works perfectly. <laughs> what the fuck? That's awesome. Now the power glove's great. That's it. I can't fucking take it anymore. These Batman games are amazing! <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh,
game still looks like. This is fuck beyond belief. Big Rigs is one of the best racing games I've ever no, played. No, no, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> oh my god, it's the high speed from that insane game. <laughs> I love the Big Rigs episode, it's so hilarious. I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm dying. There's only one thing that could save me. Should've known. It's a replica. Fuck. It's a replica. Ah! <laughs> ah! 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 Oh god. Oh, what's happening? Ah. Ah. Now I'm thinking this episode in itself is a multi-parter. Okay. <laughs> that was an unexpected ending for sure. Um, all right. I got I, I to gotta give James Rolfe some props on this. He definitely went all out with this episode. Let's admit it. There have been some episodes over the past... Mm, how many years? I don't know. Past few years, past five years six years some episodes that just were not as good um like his 200th episode was a three-parter the part one blue because it was mostly recaps and got better with each part after that at least so there's that um however so far this year i mean it's three episodes and we're and we're in july so it's he hasn't been uploading very frequently, but they've been quite good so far. I mean, I guess the lesson here is quality over quantity anyway. And um, this is quite an interesting episode. I like that in this case he reviewed multiple games. And I mean, he did that last time too, although I'm still annoyed with how on Earthworm Jim he called it a trilogy and completely left out that fourth game on Game Boy Color. Um, which I remembered playing back in the 90s, but I'm sure he's missing some Indiana Jones games, and he'll probably get to that in part two uh, whenever he uploads that, because, yeah, this, there's no way it's just going to end with this, and, and unless it's going to be one of those weird things where his character actually <laughs> does die in an episode and just comes back in the next one like nothing happened, like with the Shrek episode. Um, but yeah, this is a very good overall episode. Really good. Uh, funny all the way through. The way he reviewed the games was really well done. Uh, it was an interesting dynamic with him, with it going back to the past at 2008 and then going to the present in 2023, since he had previously reviewed Indiana Jones games back in 2008, um, the day before the fourth movie came out. And it was fewer games. It was, you know, games based off of the first three movies, you know, an Atari 2600 version based off the first movie, an NES version based off the second movie, and originally one NES version based off of the third movie, but in a later upload where he updated, it was actually two NES versions of the third movie that he uploaded, um, that, that, that he reviewed. And uh, just a really funny creative idea to make it so that it's like as if we're watching him in 2008, right after Kingdom of the Crystal Skull just came out, and then we see him again in 20, you know, now with uh, Dial of Destiny coming out. Very creative idea for sure. Um, kind of makes me think of the Mega Man episode from 2016, which was the 10-year anniversary episode, 10 years since he started his YouTube channel. One of my favorite episodes where his character goes back in time to different episodes in the past. Uh, 2007 and, and 2006 multiple times, but um, and 2004, that's right. 2007, 2006, 2004, that's right. And um, yeah, just really well made all the way through. 
really enjoy this episode. And I'm very happy I saw it because definitely was full of a lot of laughs and uh, pretty interesting creative ideas for sure. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, click that bell icon to add me notifications.